Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this Rider Grass Software tutorial for beginners, uh, I want to show you how you can make a parametric tower uh, by defining a series of sections. So you can see here, uh, I can change the location of the points of this section and the tower will be updated. So we're going to learn how to define a series of polylines for the sections. Uh, we're also going to define a line which is going to define uh, the overall height of the building uh, and it's really easy to change as you can see here we can also define how many steps we need which is the number of the divisions we going to define uh, on this line uh, we're going to learn this uh, tutorial in two steps so uh, the first step is going to be uh, as you can see here uh, I'm going to explain uh, how we're going to put the uh, defined curves or sections uh, on a line so as you can see here the first section is going to go to the start the second is going to go to the middle of the line and the last one is going to go to the top so okay let's get started from scratch what I want to do here is to draw a line in Rhino so I'm just going to select the line and click here use the control key to bring it up so I'm going to make that line and we can go to the params menu and use a curve set the curve here to this line and then we have that in grasshopper uh, now we also have to define the section so I'm going to just go uh, for this one you can actually have uh, a free form curve if you want to uh, but for this tutorial I'm just going to use polylines so I'm going to say line and you can also make it like five sided whatever you want and use the alt key to make a copy we can make three sections if we want to we can make four sections uh, or whatever so to make it as is possible I'm going to use and stick to three sections uh, so this is the base line I'm going to control C control V and set multiple curves select these sections if I want to make this the first one the second one and the last one okay now what I want to do here is to put these sections uh, on the baseline or the height the line which is going to define the height of the building for this one, I'm going to use the transform uh, and the orient uh, components, which is really great. Uh, what you have to do is to define what geometry you want to orient. Uh, obviously, these sections. Uh, the plane, the source, uh, the initial plane for this. Uh, we can maybe, for example, use the curve uh, polygon center. Polygon center is going to be a good tool if you want to find uh, the center of a polygon obviously and uh, we can give that here uh, if I go to the params menu and pick up a point you can see this is the center of the vertices uh, this is going to be the center of edges and this is the center of area you can uh, basically check which one is going to be best for your sections so I'm going to stick with the center of the vertices and when you give that point uh, this input is a plane right uh, when you give a point to a plane, it's going to assume it's an XY plane. So for example, if I give that here, what you're actually saying is that, for example, if I connect a plane to it, uh, you're saying that this is an XY plane. Let's just turn this off. An XY plane. If you're using uh, freeform curves, you can use like a surface uh, area tool because the surface area tool is going to uh, give you the centroid here, which we need. And actually, this is going to be uh, great if you have a series of NURBS curve. For example, this is my section. I'm going to make a copy and just set multiple curves. So like this one. Let's just make all of them a little bit smaller with the shift key. Okay. And as you can see here, we have an error in uh, polygon center, which is obviously because we don't have a polygon here. So you can switch between polygon center and area. This one is a little bit faster because it has to just calculate the center of the vertices and these things, which is really fast. Uh, I wanted to give you also this hint so you can also use the area if you want to. Let's just go back uh, to the polygons and as you can see here because the default uh, target is the XY plane let me just zoom in uh, it's the XY plane uh, it's assuming that it's going to put all of those three sections here so we have to 
make three sections or three planes uh, which they are going to be oriented in. Uh, that's really easy. You just have to go to the uh, curve. For this tutorial, you can use uh, you can use different methods. For example, you can use the analyzer's uh, perpendicular frame. Uh, okay, to make it as easy as possible, I'm going to use the division uh, perpendicular frames tool, which is really great because you can just give that to any curve and it's going to pick up uh, the perpendicular frames. This is exactly what we need. We can give it to the line. And obviously, the number of division is really important here, which is the count. Uh, so, for example, if I give this a number slider of two, you can see it's going to give you uh, three planes because. Uh, actually, this line is divided into two sections, and that's why it's going to give you uh, three planes. Uh, we can count the number of sections here easily. Just go here. Okay, now I'm going to just go to the list length. And the list length from the set is going to count how many data you have in one of the outputs, whatever out output you want. And as you can see here, we have uh, three sections. Uh, so we can give that... Uh, to the division or the count here and uh, obviously it's going to give you four planes so I'm just going to right click on the count and say expression x minus one right so it's going to just decrease it by one uh, so now if I just have two sections and set multiple curves again you can see it's going to divide it by uh, two and then it's going to make it x minus one which is going to be one and it's just going to give you two planes at the start and the end so that's great if you want to uh, make a parametric orientation based on the number of sections you have and now we can just give that to the target and let's just delete this one uh, that's it just delete this too if you want to make free form uh, I can change the size here uh, so the first step is to put them uh, on the line you can do different things here first you can just update these curves and the uh, orientation is going to update also uh, another thing you can do is to connect these together make a loft uh, so we can go to the surface and use the loft command and give it here to see it better I prefer to just go to the display and use a custom preview so I can see that and also I usually use a surface B-Rep edge connected to a B-Rep so I can see the edges. That's also a good thing if you want to just connect these sections to us, uh, maybe a building, something like that. You can also use the cap holes if you want to uh, convert the loft into a solid. Let's give that here and if I bake it, uh, you can see that this is going to be a solid. Maybe useful if you want to just design a solid with three sections. And what you can do here is to use the loft options, uh, surface freeform uh, loft options. Uh, it's really great because uh, you can control the type uh, you want. So for example, maybe we want a straight. So they're going to be connected straight here. Or you can just say loose or just normal. Okay, I'm going to say maybe straight, for example. So as you can see here, uh, this is a great tool if you want to design a tower. What I usually do is, let me just make this uh, bigger. Uh, we can go into two viewports. And maybe this is going to be the view from top. And this is going to be a view from perspective. I think the C plane has to be also correct. So we're top and just put your building somewhere, maybe here. Just zoom selected. Zoom selected so we have a complete focus on the building and just have the sections here. So it's really easy. You just have to turn off the gumball if you want to and play with the points and start designing building as you can see here maybe we just want to define a new section so, and we can just set that to the sections here set multiple curves first second third last let's bring it down 
you can see that there are four sections we can play around turn off the gumball and just start designing this is really great if you want to uh, design a complete building with that and remember that you can also uh, change the size of the line and design it like this so that's the first step you can orient those sections uh, on the line uh, design the building uh, for those who want to just learn more I'm going to give you one more section uh, this time what I want to do here is after orienting uh, these three sections we want to define a series of sections be uh, uh, between the three sections right which I'm going to explain uh, a plugin we're going to use the pufferfish plugin and also we're going to extrude them based on the number of divisions so it's not really that complicated uh, let me get started from scratch and what I want to do here is just turn on the orientation uh, remember that this is the line uh, so we just uh, went to this step for this time uh, I'm going to use just make that a little bit bigger uh, the plugin pufferfish plugin so you can go to the pufferfish plugin uh, pufferfish is really great because it has lots of tools in the curves menu the main mesh number plane point subdivision surface and transformation i think that this is like the best uh, plugin you can install you just have to have pufferfish always all the time it has lots of great tools colors uh, like making solids uh, i prefer to use it all the time so what i want to do here is to just go to the uh, curve and here uh, we have a series of tools uh, which is called tween obviously uh, let me just zoom in and as you can see here we have a series of tween curves tool uh, for this tutorial I want to use this tween through curves because we have a series of curves and we just want to make this uh, building uh, between these three or four sections not just like uh, tween consecutive curves or long curves and those things so I think it's a little bit easier to just grasp what's happening here uh, obviously if you want to do that without plugins uh, you have to go to the curve for two curves we have the spline uh, tween curve component which actually just makes a tween uh, between two curves okay uh, the concept is not really that hard if you want to just um, know what's happening here for two curves I can explain it so for example assume that we have these two curves and we want to make a tween we don't have that tween components uh, what you have to do is to just divide this curve for example like four for the first curve and then for the second curve then just connect them with a line okay and then divide that again so for example divide that into five points for example okay and what's going to happen is that then you have to just flip the matrix and then you can make the tween curves happen if you have more curves uh, obviously you just have to connect that uh, connect those curves together find those points on the curve and interpolate that but uh, pufferfish is really great you just have to give the curves you need so I'm going to give it here and the factor is the most important input you have to work with so it's like zero is the start of the curve one is at the end of the curve and what I want to do here is to use a range so you can just type range or you can go to the sets uh, sequence which is really a most important uh, menu you can use in grasshopper each, uh, which is going to be range we have range series and those things so range is really important and as you can see here the domain of the range uh, by default is between 0 and 1 which is exactly what we want because zero is the start of the curve one is at the end so zero is here one is here and the number of steps we want so firstly if I just divide that to 25 sections and give that to the factor just uh, as you can see here it's producing those curves between uh, my sections which is really great and after that we what we have to do is to extrude them so I'm just going to go to the params menu connect a surface to it if you want to make a surface like that uh, another thing I want to do here is because uh, I want to extrude it just decrease that number 
uh, I want to extrude these up uh, what I have to do here is to get rid of the last one because if I extrude the last one uh, also it's going to give you an extra height here which I think uh, obviously we don't need right because we just uh, want this line to define the height of the building uh, so I'm going to go back here I use the set sequence and I'm going to use the call index component call index is going to say delete uh, an index obviously and I'm going to say call index and let's stick with zero I prefer to use zero instead of finding the number of lists and those things and as you can see here it's deleting the first one and because the list can be reversed we can just simply just right click on the list and say reverse it so it's going to reverse it the first one is going to be here and then it's going to be zero one two three till the end and I'm going to turn off the twin curve so you can see that we are getting rid of this one and then we can give that to the surface and just turn off everything here and now we can extrude it up so just simply go to the surface uh, freeform and extrude and that's going to help you to extrude you can also type ext i think extr extr extrude uh, in the z direction and uh, let's just connect a custom preview so you can see that again you can connect a b-rep edges if you wanted to just see the edges and why not just give a number slider if you want to just make a series of twin curves extruded you can use that it's not that bad you can increase or decrease the number you want here uh, but what we need here is to just extrude them exactly the height they have right so for example if I disable this we have to extrude them uh, exactly the same amount we have here right so we have to extrude that uh, amount obviously that's not really that hard uh, if this is uh, the height of the line and we have number of sections here so it's n it's going to be h divided by n right this obvious so I'm going to just go to the params menu uh, trick you can always use is to connect uh, a number to a curve it's going to just actually find the length but you can also go to the curve and use this uh, list length component if you want to you can see that this is going to be the same so if I use a panel and connect them together you can see that that's the same number so obviously you can use uh, both methods but I'm going to just stick with this length and then I'm going to just divide that with the number of divisions I defined uh, here in the range and use this number as the Z extrusion uh, let's just turn it on go to the front view you can see that there is no gap here uh, if you want to make a gap maybe a multiplication can also help I just had an idea here so you can say a multiplication between 0 and 1 and then give it to the direction you can see it's actually uh, 1 is going to be complete extrusion and 0 is going to be 0 obviously nothing so you can also use this technique if you want to uh, have a multiplication of that uh, that's it and you can see that it's exactly at the height of the line so let's just bake that line and uh, set it again and you can see that's exactly uh, the building is uh, being the same height as the line so I think it's a good way of re uh, viewing the tower for your project and also you can play with the sections uh, so that's it that's uh, I wanted to explain this tween through curves so you can understand that you can make this parametric building and tomorrow we're going to have an online session uh, for some advanced examples for example if we have a series of curves in Rhino and as you can see here they are not sorted so this is the first one this is the second one 
the third one and we're going to learn how to sort them and as you can see here we're going to design uh, the tower sections by simply just moving the sections in Rhino. So we're going to talk about uh, how we can find the difference between the sections and uh, produce the final results. So this is going to be one of the techniques I'm going to talk uh, in the online session. Uh, then we're going to talk how we can convert the roof uh, into an offset solid uh, and as you can see here the height of the uh, tower and the thickness of the roof is going to be controllable as you can see here I can change the roof height and also the offset and what kind of offset you need as you can see here so we're going to talk about this uh, in one of the lessons in the next step I'm going to talk about uh, how we can make a frame and a window so as you can see here I can change the number of U division and also the window size uh, about the offset frame and also a thickness uh, for the frame as you can see here we can give it a thickness so this lesson is also going to be uh, some advanced technique about meshes joining welding and those things then we're going to talk about uh, how we can make a, a parametric truss simply here uh, so we can control the height the size of the number of the divisions and as you can see here we can uh, make a simple railing on the edge of the roof and in the last lesson I'm going to talk about the first floor how we can make an offset from that I give it a hatch pattern so I'm going to talk about hatches uh, the scaling as you can see here I can change the scale the hatch pattern and also the angle so we can simply just give this a different angle a size and then we can have that in Rhino so this lesson uh, is going to be for the premium users uh, I'm going to uh, put the link in the description you can check it out and it's going to be tomorrow we're going to talk about two hours about different techniques uh, about uh, some advanced techniques some simple techniques of how you can control this tower and give it more details so be sure to uh, uh, attend the online session if you want to learn more and we're going to have like a Q&A and talk about uh, mm, your problems you have with grasshoppers so it's going to I think it's going to be a good online session Okay, thanks for watching. Remember to like this video, subscribe to our channel uh, so you get notified about our new videos and see you next time. Bye.